Hello. So last time I went over my mail setup, I showed you all how I read and send mail on the terminal. So I thought it would be interesting to show how I handle my RSS subscriptions on the terminal as well. And what do I mean by that? Say you're on a website or a YouTube channel and you're reading someone's article or watching their video and you like what you read or see and you decide you want to know when they have new stuff out. Well, usually they'll have a feed that you can subscribe to. Now, I'm not talking about clicking on someone's subscribe button or anything like that. Usually a website will have a document that they periodically update. And then it's your responsibility to check this document or feed to see if there's anything new. My website has one. Uh, you can click on it right here. Now, Google used to have something called Google Reader. It's now defunct but it would subscribe to RSS feeds and update them for you in a nice little dashboard. And when Google Reader died almost a decade ago, I tried different websites, but nothing ever really clicked. I tried self-hosting with tiny, tiny RSS and some other solutions until finally I realized everything I wanted was all in the terminal using some very simple tools. Uh, you've already seen me demonstrate a few of them, including FDM and Emblaze. FDM to fetch mail and Emblaze to manipulate messages in the mail deer format. And with the addition of SFeed, we can read feeds and get updated on all of our content, all from the terminal. So let's get started with SFeed. With SFeed, we can parse RSS and Atom feeds and convert them into other formats like plain text, HTML, and MBox, which will be very useful to us. Since it's not actually in the OpenBSD package repository, I need to actually clone the repository and build it. So I'll copy this command and cd into my workspace. Now I'll go into the SV directory. Um, you can see here to build and install, you just do make and make install. So let's do that. And then make install. Okay, now let's check out the manual pages. This page goes over most of what you need, including how to set it up on your machine. Uh, example setup. Here we go. So you just create a directory for the SFeed RC configuration file, and then you copy the uh, example SFeed RC file into that directory, and then you're off to the races. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to our uh, SFeed directory, and we can just make dear dash p SFeed feeds. And then we can copy, uh, whoops, and then into SFeed, I believe. Yes. No, SFeed RC. Yeah. And then we can uh, open that file. And we can see there are some feeds here. We don't really need these. I'm going to add some feeds now. Okay, now that we're done, we can write and then quit. Next, let's see. Uh, so then we can just write the command sfeed update. Now, if we go to sf sfeed feeds, we can see. Oh, wait, no, sorry. We just need to go to the home directory SFeed feeds. And we can see that we have a feed called Joseph Cho. And it is basically a tab separated value list of uh, all of the uh, all the entries. Now let's check out the manual page for SFeed Mbox. Mbox isn't the format that we want. We want MailDeer, but we can use this tool, sfeed underscore Mbox, to get our feeds into the Mbox format. 
which remember, mbox format is just one large spool file that contains all the messages in a mailbox. And then we can use fdm to convert from mbox to maildeer. And just for completion's sake, let's go ahead and check out the man page for svdrc. And you can see uh, this is just the example, svdrc.example that we saw. It shows a list of feeds, and you can use this format to basically add your feeds to the rc file. So now that that's done, we've got the feeds in our cache. Now we need to actually convert that into an mbox format. We saw that with svd mbox. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, actually, if you look at this environment variable, svd mbox content, that includes the content if it's set to true. That's actually what I want to do. So let's go ahead and do that. svd underscore mbox content equals one. And then svd mbox. And then we need to set the path. Uh, let me go ahead and change the directory to home. Uh, let me write that again. <laughs> Speed mbox. And then we need to get to the path to all the feeds. And then we feed that all into .svd and to an mbox file. And then we're done. If you look, we can go to svd, the directory, and see that, yeah, this is an mbox file with all of the uh, entries from my website's feed. So this next part with FDM and mBlaze should be pretty straightforward and familiar. I'm not going to go over it in much depth. We need to edit an fdm.com file. And if you remember, I have one here. Let's see. Yeah, fdm.com. What I like to do is I like to use separate fdm.com files for my mail and my RSS feeds. But you can do whatever you like. In any case, the RSS fdm.com file is very similar to the mail fdm.com file with only a slight difference. Let's go ahead and open the mail fdm.com file. I'll uh, grab all this and then uh, create a new file, fdm.svd.com. Uh, let's put a dot in for that. And so what I'll do is I don't want to use the same mail dear folder from my mail as my reader. So I'll just change this to reader. And I'll also change the cache. And then I need to change this account. We're not connecting to an IMAP server. So really what we want is a feed, an mbox file. And that mbox file is located the home directory in .svd mbox. And we can delete that. And then everything else should be pretty much the same, except when we get here, we can do match case x feed name in headers. And that will, if we uh, go ahead and look at the mbox, we can see that X feed name is a property in or one of the headers in each of these little messages. And that should be pretty much it. So let's write and quit. And before we convert our mbox file to maildeer, we actually need to create the maildeer folder. And you can see that's right here. It now has a three uh, directories inside here called cur, new, and temp. Same with other mail deer folders. And now we can run fdm f, but we have to point to the fdm svd.com file and then we can fetch. So we process 55 messages. We go to the reader directory. We can see that all these messages are in the new directory. So that's good. And so now we can use mblaze to view these messages we need to view the reader directory. And we want to sort these by date. Uh, I want the most recent entries at the top. And then we just use M sequence from the standard input. And then we run M scan. As you can see, yeah, I have a lot of these. <laughs> Let's try to do this. 
Let's try to do the top 27 entries. Oh, whoops, I think I made a mistake. There we go. And then we can use other emblaze tools to read these entries. Like, if we go here, we can see, oh, look, I see this link. And I can just continue going. And if I'm done reading one, like I, I read this entry here, I can just do M flag dash capital S and the entry number. And then I can re get the uh, sequences for the for the reader. Oh, whoops. Is this not? Oh, that's not doing anything. Let's see. M flag mark messages as seen. That looks correct. All right. So I, I think I know what I did wrong. So this won't work until I include all the messages. So if you remember from the previous video, we need to incorporate the new messages from the new directory to the current directory. Otherwise, uh, I don't think M flag will work. So we need to do M include the reader directory. That's all included now. Let's go ahead and update our sequences. And now we can do M flag scene third message. And then we update our sequences again, and you can see it no longer is visible because mlist dash s, mlist dash s only shows the messages that are not marked as seen. Okay, so sorry for that delay. Now, say you want to do something similar with your favorite YouTube channel. You only need to keep a lookout for the HTML tag link rel. Uh, alternate, yada, 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 inside the uh, source of the uh, web page. Now you can right click in Firefox or something like that and get it that way. But let's show it in W3M. W3M is a text based browser like Minx or Minx. So actually, let me grab this URL. And if we view the source, we get the RSS. We can see this link rel alternate tag with the type application RSS XML. Uh, grab this URL. And now we can just update the uh, run control file. with the feed, and then we run sfeed update and sfeed mbox. And then we run fdm. And then we update our sequences. And then you can see that, I mean, I, I double post on YouTube and my website. But this is the YouTube URL, while this one is my website. So that's a fun little thing you can do with these tools. You can periodically update your RSS feeds through a cron job or something similar, and then consume your media through your terminal. I think it's pretty nifty. If you have any questions for me, be sure to check out my website, josephcho.com. I'm also on Twitter, GitHub, Reddit, and a lot of other social networks. Bye-bye.